Hello. Hello, everyone. And welcome to this virtual group uh, webinar session today with Carl. My name is uh, Daniel Boronat, and I am responsible person of the Indian Business Unit in Kauchi Mirav. And I would like to talk about the challenge of the India things for the food packaging market in order to be in compliance with the current food regulations. So here you are, this is the agenda with the topics I would like to talk, but first, please let me make a brief introduction of my company. Cal Corporation is a Japanese company found in 1887 with a consolidated net sales of 11 0.34 billion euros and operating income of 1.45 billion euros during the last year. The total number of employees is 33,000 and our products are sold in over than 100 countries around the world. Cow is a chemical company with five different business lines. A chemical uh, business based on the surface and material science which our India Things division belongs. Then it's a second group based on consumer products such as living care business, health and beauty care business, life care business, and cosmetic business. Cao is a green company fully committed with sustainability and respect for the environment with a total reduction of water use of 23% and 18% in CO2 emissions. So you can see in this map, our main affiliates for Indian business in yellow color and other affiliates, which are supporting us to keep a bigger and strongly worldwide supply chain. As a cow is a customer oriented company, we want to be close to our customers. Let me introduce you cow advanced printing solution. It is formed by three companies focused in the Indian things technology in cow. Cow Collins, based in Cincinnati in US, Cal Chemigraph based in Barcelona, Spain, and Cal Corporation Chemical Business based in Tokyo in Japan. All of them with India Things local manufacturing plants and R&D teams to be a global printing solution provider group. So you should know Cal invest 4% of the net sales amount in R&D and all our R&D teams are connected to share our field experience and know-how. Now, please, uh, I would like to introduce you to my colleague, Juan Carlos Fernandez. He is the R&D Senior Manager in Calchimiraf, and he will explain in detail how the UV Inks works. So please, Juan Carlos, proceed. So, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. So let me talk first about the formulation of UV inks, and then I will explain uh, briefly how they works. Okay, so uh, UV inks are formulated with many uh, raw materials, but the most important are the uh, pigments, photoinitiators, oligomers, and monomers. So the, the pigments are responsible to give uh, color to the, to the ink. So when the photoinitiators uh, are exposed to UV light, it starts like a polymerization reaction, uh, generating free radicals and then the oligomers and monomers cross-link or uh, polymerize. Uh, the main features of the UV inks are, uh, first, they have uh, excellent image quality and uh, superior gloss. The second is uh, the UV inks are suitable for wide range of media. Uh, they have high opacity and excellent wrap and chemical resistance. And because uh, UV inks are 100% solids, uh, everything you print onto the substrate stays there. So the productivity is 100% uh, and uh, uh, there is no evaporation and no VOCs, not uh, volatile organic compounds. That means that uh, such kind of inks, uh, UV inks are considered uh, environmentally uh, friendly. So, uh, and then regarding the good open time or the open time, uh, uh, UVINX has a, have a very good open time uh, because uh, the machine is ready to print when the ink doesn't, uh, because the ink doesn't dry in the, in the print head. Uh, unfortunately, there are some concerns uh, regarding uh, UVINX. For, uh, for instance, uh, odor and safety. 
both issues are related with the non-reactive substances. So the main concept of the UV low migration inks is uh, the percentage of uh, degree or the, the degree of polymerization. So uh, uh, the uh, standard UV inks has a uh, polymerization degree around uh, 75 or 85. But because we want to avoid any unreacted uh, substances, we need to achieve the complete reaction. So the polymerization degree must be for UV and low migration, 100%. So uh, before designing a low migration ink, we should uh, take into consideration several things or some questions. First one is the substrate, okay? Do we need a primer? Uh, if we are trying to migrate or to avoid any migration through the substrate, we should apply like a barrier between the ink and then the corrugate. So the primer is a, is a, is a must. Then the selection of paper should be crucial in order to get the best ink performance because of the dot expansion, bending, and bleeding. Uh, what about the ink properties? First, addition. Addition should be good enough in order to avoid any uh, ink layer delamination. Compatibility with the printhead, okay? Some parts of the printhead are very sensitive uh, to the chemicals, especially the ones that they are directly in contact with the ink. We should uh, take care about uh, avoiding uh, any aggressive substances or, or monomers. Then the chemical resistance is also important, like die cutting or bending resistance. Obviously, if we are talking about food packaging, the entire packaging and the inks, obviously, uh, doesn't, uh, mustn't smell. And uh, the recyclability is another is a, is a must, or is important to consider. And in, in that sense, uh, UVX are, uh, have better behavior in that sense than other ink technologies. And then uh, shelf life, shelf life of the, of the ink. Regarding pigments, uh, pigments are an important source of non-desirable substances like uh, PEA, heavy metals, and so on. So it's important to work with uh, uh, high purity uh, pigments. Light fastness, uh, also important, okay, depending on the application, but it's also important. And rheology, uh, it's also important because the pigment should be dispersed in a correct way in order to keep the shelf life. Photo initiators, uh, because uh, they are sensitive to radiation, we should consider uh, which type of wavelength we are working on. No? If we are working only on UV, only on LED, or a combination of UV and LED. And then, of course, uh, they can provide low migration uh, behavior. Regarding monomers, uh, we should choose the right combination, depending on the uh, specific mi migration limit or the viscosity or compatibility with the printhead, high purity, and so on. And from the point of view of the printhead uh, and the printing machine, of course, uh, because the ink is a fluid, we, uh, we need to achieve very good uh, jetting performance. So that means a correct drop size, drop placement, and avoid uh, any satellites, uh, for instance. So, uh, uh, how we really achieve low migration properties with uh, our inks, okay? First, uh, focusing on the photo initiators, we select the right ones uh, with the lowest migration speed and with high reactivity. Uh, obviously, we must for, fulfill the European regulations like uh, AUPIA or Swiss Ordinance or uh, Nestle Negative List uh, guidance. Regarding monomers and oligomers, uh, we should take into consideration, like I mentioned before, many things, uh, low migration profile, switch ordinance compliance, preferably uh, list A, okay, high reactivity, and so on. And as I mentioned before, ink must be polymerized at 100% or at 99.9%. Okay, as you can see in the, in, on the right uh, hand in the chart, the standard UV inks, achieves only an 80% of polymerization. But uh, thanks or our, thanks uh, our in technology, and, uh, we can achieve the 100% the with the uh, Chimijet F, uh, FDP uh, X. Then, of course, the right selection of uh, raw materials, okay? We need to select uh, pure, pure uh, raw materials in order to avoid any uh, 
uh, impurities or nayas, no? non-intentionally added uh, substances like uh, primary aromatic amines or heavy metals or bisphenol A. And last but not least, I would like to mention the importance of uh, any of avoiding, uh, let's say, uh, cross-contamination in the production facilities. So in that sense, we follow the good manufacturing practices and uh, we have a traceability system, we have dedicated machines, uh, we got a specific cleaning process and we establish a periodical uh, ink analysis uh, internally in order to avoid any uh, cross-contamination. So, okay, that's all from my side. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to make questions at the end. So Daniel will continue uh, now about the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Juan Carlos. But please stay with us because uh, probably I will need your help for the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Well, um, I, will, I would like to share with all of you a chaos success case in corrugated market with you below my rationings. So please let me give, give me let me give you some uh, background and experience in this uh, application in this market to you. In the last 2013, Cow and Barber and Company presented in an inject solution for corrugated market, winning the gold award in FEFCO technical, technical uh, seminar. Cow has developed a UV low migration ink corrugated thanks to the close collaboration with Barberan in this and this ink is a solution called Chimiet CRB FDP inks. This was presented in the last two Drupati uh, 2016. And we are Flexo water-based analog inks manufacturer too. So we had a long experience in this corrugated market and know very well our customer needs. So let's go to the, for the main topic today. And it's important to know that uh, inks for food packaging must be in compliance with regulation in their formulas components, but also in the migration levels. So let me briefly explain to you what means migration. Migration is the undecided transferred components from any element forming the packaged goods. That means inks, of course, but also other elements as adhesive, varnishes, coatings, primers, substrate, or the production environment conditions too, okay? There are different types of migration, but set of migration is the most common migration focusing corrugate. This is happening from the print side to the reverse side from the cardboard in the stacker pile. So why UV inks are so bad fame in the food industry? Well, probably because the migration issues in the past. The most famous was uh, witness Leve AB meat contamination in 2005. And that's uh, why today Nestle kind of list is a reference in the food market regulation. So I want to focus now in the challenge of each inject inks technology referent to the migration levels. Uh, you should know that all inject ink technologies have components that are subject to migrate, all of them. Yeah, including the water based things. So let's take a look on this table and see the crit critical components in each inject ink. For instance, UV inks has photo initiators and monomers components. These components should be specific for low migration. Okay. We are uh, checking and, and making our research with other providers to certify we are using such kind of photo initiators and monomers allowed to the low migration application in, in, in our ink formulation. But water-based inks also has some components uh, subject to migrate, such as biocides, wetting additives, BOC, and even also pH controller additives. Other inject inks technology that we can take a look today, for instance, hybrid, which is a mix of UV and water-based, we also can find uh, uh, components that can can be a problematic in terms of migration, such as photo initiators, biocides, pH controller additives again, but also in this technology, also substrate absorption is an is a, a important topic to control. As my uh, colleague Juan Carlos advised to you before, uh, is in, when we talk about low migration, uh, primer is, is, is probably a must in, in, in many different inject technology. And finally, LAD curing technology, 
Well, uh, these kind of things mainly are formulated with ITX uh, photo initiators, which are not allowed for low migration application and, and, and also are Nestle banned. So this is one of the, the, the big problems on this technology. And also the, the, the LED curing uh, technology uh, capacity needs to be very powerful and, and also controlled. So something important to understand, and I would like to clarify is the European legislation does not specifically cover printing inks in their supplied form. Uh, so ink manufacturers follow regulation uh, on plastic materials and articles intended to come into contact with food. Okay, so there are, there are so many regulations with reference on the materials and elements intended for indirect and direct contact with food. So that's why the migration issue is not only an ink challenge, okay? So all elements involved in the packaging product and the production process itself needs to certify there is no migration over the permitted levels, okay? So from the legal perspective, the responsibility rests on the brand owner. This is a company who introduced the product in the consumer market, but as an e-manufacturer and providers in the supply chain, we have to provide a certification to our customers, in that case, the printing and converter companies. And in the same way, they need to certify their production process in compliance with regulation and to provide this certification to their customer and so on and continue the rest of the supply chain. Okay, so CAL provides a certificate to its customers with all the detailed information of the, our Chimijet CRV FDPs formulated in accordance with GMPs, of course. All components in, are in compliance with uh, the main food uh, regulations, such as Swiss ordinance, Nestle guidance, the FDA in US, Japanese printing, and Tetra Pak regulations. Moreover, CAO certificates overall and SML, which means a specific migration test, are passed. These tests were made by an independent consultant laboratory, which is a worldwide reference. It's also important to mention that migration test was on Tenax using the same method of other inkjet inks technologies. There are also other advantages in our OU below migration inks. So Jimmy Jet CR FDP inks has passed the Robinson test with no perceptible results for chocolates. This uh, probably sounds very familiar to our customers, which are uh, uh, printing for packaging for chocolates company. This is a test to evaluate the ink odor after curing. So as Juan Carlos explains before, uh, odor in U inks was a, an other big issue, but it, this is something that is already fixed today in this uh, U-Inks technology. Another important, important advantage in the U-Inks is the recyclability level of the, of compared with other inkjet inks technology. CAO uh, performed a, a test with the Chimijet CRV of the beings obtained a 97 over 100 the inkability score in the inkjet method element test. Everything over 75 <laughs> score it's considered at the maximum level of the, the inkability in this test. So this is a very good resource and is another key driver today, right? Sustainability and respect for the environment. So this is a, again, another good advantage on this uh, inkjet inks technology. And finally, this formula is uh, 100 solid formulation as Juan Carlos explains. This is very low VOC contents, no heavy metals for sure, benzophenone and also on the plating substance and night is completely free for sure. All these features and, 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 and detailed information we are providing in our certificates to our customers. And just a reminder again that uh, we as an in, uh, providers to the food packaging market, we need to certify we're in compliance with the regulation, but we also have to prove that we uh, pass the migration level test, okay? Well, uh, just to mention the cow uh, has different product portfolio, very complete. 
And just to show you for the corrugated market, we have uh, uh, this Chimijet CRV additive inks, which are the low migration certified inks, suitable for indirect food contact applications. And we can offer in different color gamuts and, and different containers. Okay. So I think uh, from my side is uh, right now everything. Uh, you can find us in our new website. I invite you to join us in cowprint.com. Me, Juan Carlos, and our team will be very glad to attend you. So thank you very, very much for your attention. I think now it's time to go for the Q&A. Uh, let's see if there is any a specific uh, question uh, to us. Okay, I think, yeah. Can I check? Yeah. Well, I think Juan Carlos, this is a, a question that uh, probably you, you need to, to, to help me. This uh, Mr. Ipei Nakamura is asking how about ISO 22000? I'm not directly familiarized with the, all the ISO numbers, but probably Juan Carlos, you can help us on this question. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, if we can. Yes, please. Yeah, we are uh, right now. We are uh, uh, we are certified by uh, GMPs because uh, this is a very, let's say, uh, uh, strong uh, requirements. Okay, the ISO twenty two that uh, thousand that is related to the security of food. Okay, we are uh, starting to uh, to. Uh, to, to meet such kind of uh, requirements, okay. This is a uh, we are qualified by uh, uh, okay in order to make a indirect food contact. So this ISO is very very restrictive. So the the idea is to to start yes uh, uh, start with this uh, ISO regulation, but uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is uh, another question uh, coming from uh, Mr. Eladio Larga. How long have you your long migration inks used in the market? Well, that's a, a very good one. Uh, actually, uh, as I think I, I, I mentioned during the presentation, we start to introduce this ink formulation in the market in 2015, Juan Carlos, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So during this, the last year, we are uh, have collaborating with uh, our partners and our customers in order to get and to, to, the, and to achieve all the uh, requirements to get these certifications. It's a combination of the inks and primer substrate technology. It's a lot of hard work effort during the last year to achieve today this kind of results. I hope this is a good um, uh, a reply to, to Mr. Eladio. Uh, there is another question. I think this is from, from my side, from Nighthat today. Uh, he's directly asking about the cost of the UV ink per kg. I think <laughs> this is a good question, a kind of tricky question because uh, our experience uh, today is, is, is you are, uh, when you are introducing this kind of technology to a, an analog uh, converter or printing company, they normally try to compare the same uh, cost of analog inks uh, compared with the, with the inkjet inks. And it's a big gap, of course, okay? But uh, I think it's, uh, in order to compare apples with apples, it should be considered uh, different aspects to, at the end, we need to, to find the, the cost by square meters. Okay, comparing the both technologies, and of course, it's directly related with the with the batch size of the in the production. I think that's the way to compare and to find the, and evaluate the, the correct in price. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is not a commercial presentation, so probably we can discuss in in private about the prices today. Okay. But I have to say, uh, today are very competitive price. Okay, comparing with even with other inkjet technology. Okay. Uh, Mark 
Uh, there is another question. May you explain better which is the difference in the drinkability between UV and water based sinks? Uh, well, uh, I will try, Juan Carlos. I, it's technical, but really? I, okay. I will try. Yeah, Don't I worry, think no uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, as every, everybody knows, UV inks are pure and it's, uh, it's a polymerization uh, layer. And the final round, the, the inkability uh, and the, during the recycling uh, process is made by flotation in the water. So that's uh, helping a lot uh, in the case of the UVs because they are not, uh, uh, they cannot dilute in the, in the water like other uh, kind of inkjet inks, right? So that's uh, one of the reasons why UVs get a high level of inkability level in the recyclability. Yeah. Something, uh, something wrong, Juan Carlos, please. No, 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 it's, per it's perfect. No, 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 the, 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 you are right. The main difference is, uh, okay, water-based things, because the, the inkability is a um, uh, process of uh, separation and then a chemical, chemical uh, attack. So the, these uh, uh, water-based inks are soluble, soluble. So the, the separation, because of the solubility of water-based inks in such kind of uh, liquids, is uh, is difficult to to achieve so uh, in that sense uh, uv inks uh, if the ink is correctly uh, polymerized uh, is is better is better in the case of uh, the degree of the inkability is better in in the case of uv than in in, uh, in water based inks but okay. in in a standard in the standard conditions of course Okay, thank you. Uh, there is another interesting question from Peter Vanderklis. Uh, what can you tell regarding the type typical odor of UV inject in relation to food packaging and corrugated board? Well, uh, from my side, I have to say uh, this is one of the key uh, requirements for food packaging for sure. We were performing this Robinson test because was uh, one of our customers was working with a chocolate company. And we had to perform this kind of, uh, this is called Robinson test. It's kind of test to quantify the odor of the ink. And this is made uh, how, more or less just to, to explain to you uh, is after curing is uh, the test is, is, in, is like they put in contact with the, with the, in that case with chocolate during some time and, after, and, and in some specific conditions. And after this, uh, there is some kind of uh, evaluation, but some uh, some test evaluation in order to quantify this this solo, right, Juan Carlos? And and mm -hmm. and yes. kind of grown chocolate has you know is, is, has some fat and some elements that are normally very easy to uh, absorb different odors in the ambient, and that's why this is a typical requirement in this uh, in this industry. Uh, yeah, it's true that the. Uh, Long, long time ago, in the beginning of the UV inks in, the, in this market, uh, odor was a, a, an issue, that's, that's for sure. But I, today is something is, uh, in terms of ink formulation is already, already fixed, correct, for Juan Carlos? Yeah, from the point of view of uh, chemistry, the odor comes from the unreacted uh, substances. So it's a question to select the, the right formulation you know, in terms of uh, photo initiators or, or monomers. So, Typical photonisators uh, of uh, UV can do this bad eff effect, but uh, okay. fortunately we can avoid. There is another uh, question, but it's uh, less than two minutes, uh, so let's let's go for this. Uh, uh, there is someone which is uh, um, asking about viscosity spec of the inks and and if we can recommend an an inkjet printhead uh, for this ink. And so on. I, I have to say, we as, a, as an ink manufacturer, we can adapt the uh, viscosity of the ink for uh, every kind of uh, printhead technology today. So we have relationship with uh, all different uh, printhead manufacturers. So this is not an issue today for, for, for us. Okay. Um, there's another interesting question here How to select between low migration U UV inks and EV inks? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> Um, I think uh, today's a question of um, it's more a technology uh, challenge, right, Juan Carlos? I, I mean, it's, uh, if I know wrong, um, EV curing technology today is 
is designed for roll to roll application and 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 we are talking today about post printing uh, sheet by sheet printing right so i think this is a kind of a challenge today right right yeah it's most on the let's say uh, hardware side than the than the uh, chemistry side because yeah, but of course, it's, it's a safe uh, EV is also safe uh, uh, in technology. Yeah, of course, of course, because the, they don't have uh, potentiator. So yes, right. exactly. Right. Okay, so yeah, I think we almost done. We are out of time. So I have to say thank you very much to everybody today join us during this uh, presentation. And please uh, take care and stay safe. Okay. So please, uh, you can join us in our carprint.com. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.